Good morning, warriors. How's everybody today? Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning, Henderson. Good morning, Latoya. Y'all good today? Hey, Sharon. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all good today? Here. Share that. All right. Let's come on. Let's flood this timeline with green hearts for Avery. We're going to focus on Avery for the next two days. We're about to see a miracle. Flood timeline. Well, let's do some hearts. Y'all know our colors. Green for Avery. Uh, yellow for Monica. Thank you for purple for me. Hey, Keisha. Good morning. And, of course, red for the blood of Jesus. But I want to see as many green hearts as possible because we're about to see a miracle. So let's go ahead and just get in faith together because I need y'all to get in faith with me because we're going to see something tomorrow. So uh, let's see the green hearts. What's the temperature here today, y'all? Uh? We're going to 2 Samuel today, 9. For those who... Thank you, Keisha. Uh, thank you for joining Tiffany. <laughs> We're going to 2 Samuel 9 today. So, uh, yes, I love you guys so much. Please share this. This is important. Uh, Ms. Laneve, I have the journal you got me. Thank you. Oh, my God. Let me see that thing Liz got me. Liz, wherever you are, God bless your soul. Thank you. Good morning, Karen. Thank you. Green hearts, y'all. Let's flood it. Green hearts. Y'all, y'all have sent me so many amazing things. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Liz, I got the gift that you sent me, and it was nothing short of amazing. Yeah, that's going to show backwards because of the screen all of a sudden. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Green hearts, please. I want to see them. We're we about to be about our father's business on tomorrow. So y'all help me. I need your help. Green hearts for Avery. Um, this is Avery. Avery had a traumatic brain injury. She's in Nebraska, and that is where we are going in the morning. And we believe God is going to wake her up. So this is Avery. For those of you who are new to the page, you don't know who she is. So flood the timeline. Of course, we got our yellow hearts for Monica. Still standing with Miss Regina Sykes and her family. Believe in God for a miracle there as well. So uh, we just believe in God, y'all. We just I told you we're a radical group of believers, and we're not afraid to, to ask God for things that seem to be impossible because that's what God specializes in. He's looking for people with bold faith, and I believe he's found us. And I'm thankful for that. So, yes, um, I'm excited about it. Uh, so, remember, tomorrow I'm going to come on an hour early. That's going to be 5 a.m. Central Standard Time and 6 a.m. Eastern Time. And I won't be on long as I got a flight to catch. I got some business to go handle in Nebraska. But I will be on tomorrow. And I hope you'll get up because this is important because we'll be going out tomorrow for Avery. And I hope you'll just make that sacrifice with me and get up an hour earlier tomorrow because I want to see how many people are really going to get up and join me an hour early in the morning. So, yeah, make sure, I mean, if you're in, let me know that you're in, because this is important. I need your support, and going forth, there is power in agreement. So I want to see that tomorrow. Uh, also, remember to let us know, thank you, Miss Regina, uh, where you're from, what country you're from, po post where you're from, and also your flag, please. That's important also. So, yeah, I'm excited. Thanks to everybody who's coming in. Let's flood this timeline. Green hearts for Avery. I believe we're going to see a miracle, y'all. So her family's praying. We're praying. The churches get together tonight. They're having a service at their church in Oklahoma tonight. Um, we're not playing. We're serious. We believe God's about to do something. So we want to be in position in alignment. Amen. Thank you, Jai. Jai said she's in. So hi, Cammie. Cammie, I'm ready for a miracle. What about you? I believe it. I, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I believe it. I'm excited. And last I checked, I only had to have this much faith. The size of a mustard seed. And I got it. So I'm ready. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to all of you all who are in. Y'all get ready because we're going to see a miracle. It's 6 o'clock on the dot. Good morning. If you're new to the page, welcome. We love you. Today's your birthday. Happy and blessed birthday. Um, if you're new to the page, welcome your official prayer warrior. Please, you guys, share this video because I want all these spectators out there that don't believe that God still performs miracles. They're going to see in just a second that he really does. So make sure y'all are sharing these videos. Um... Good morning. Today we're going to come from 2 Samuel 9. Please share the video. I wonder, uh, one of the prayer warriors, Liz, sent this correct. She sent a lot of nice things. It says 1 million strong. When I up, when I updated the app on my new phone, it reversed the image. So now all of a sudden I'm backwards again, but I don't have time to worry about that. But I'm just letting y'all know for those of you who think I don't know that my shirt was reading backwards because some of y'all took the time to let me know that. So anyway, when I, up, when I updated my phone, it reversed the image. So nothing I can do about that, but keep praying. But anyway, uh, Liz, I got this scrapbook and it is nothing short of amazing. Y'all, she scrapped. I mean, it is just, ah, it's awesome. Thank you. So I get so many amazing gifts, but this just really touched my heart that she took the time to do this for me. I mean, it's just stuck all the way through it. 
just amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate everything that you put in this basket for me. All these journals you guys are sending and stuff. I really appreciate this stuff. So thank you for that. Okay. So yes, tomorrow morning. Remember, I'm going to Nebraska. We're going to, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to wake up Avery. So I'll be in Nebraska tomorrow evening and you all just stay tuned. <laughs> I believe we're going to have some breaking news tomorrow. And also, um, Today at 12.15 Central Time, 1.15 Eastern Time, I really need you guys to join me on CBN's page. Uh, Charlene and I, we're doing our prayer link segment today. It's going to be good. I'm going to be teaching about the importance of positioning and what to do while you wait on God to answer your prayer. So be sure to tune in to that and make sure you share that video as well because God is doing something even in that. So please be sure to join in today. That's on CBN's page. We're going to go live at 12.15 Central, 1.15 Eastern Time. That's today. It's every Thursday, y'all. We're going to be doing that. Okay, remember an hour early tomorrow. Uh, we're going to get on an hour early tomorrow. And I'll post that to remind you, but we're going to start this video tomorrow morning an hour early. So that's 5 a.m. Central Time and 6 a.m. Eastern Time, which some of the people in the Eastern Coast was asking me for that anyway. But so you get it tomorrow. We'll just see what happens. So did I get everything? I think I covered everything. We're going to jump right in, y'all, to 2 Samuel 9. And, of course, we're flooding this thing with green hearts because we're believing God's going to do an amazing thing tomorrow with Avery. So we the green hearts are for Avery Anderson. So, all right, let's roll here. Okay, we're going to 2 Samuel 9. And we're talking about David still, you know, we're in the study of David. And yesterday, you know, we talked about how David went went through and he just was really doing some things. He wasn't planning on yesterday, taking out the Philistines, taking out the Moabites, taking out, conquering the area of the river Euphrates, taking over the king over there, um, what had, had a desert. Or, yeah, yeah, him. Took him out. And then Toy sent his son Joram and they made peace and they were friends and all of that going on. Then he took out the Edomites. Remember, he took out 22,000 in the Euphrates area and took out 18,000 with the Edomites. David wasn't playing. So that was in that. So now here we have David. Just on another note, another part of David, just this kind, tender hearted person. Man, we've been studying David for a minute now and it's been an amazing study. And just seeing, like, why was it that he was called a man after God's own heart? Because anybody that is known as being a man after God's own heart, I want to know about that person because I want people to say, I want God to be able to say that Kelly was a woman after my heart. Don't you want God to say that about you? So since we have an example in scripture, I think it's best that we take our time and dissect it and see what we can apply to our own lives so that we too can be considered sons and daughters after our father's heart. So that is why we're taking our time in this. So in 2 Samuel 9, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation today, beginning with 1, and I'm going to end it at 12. And here we go. We're talking about Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. Remember Jonathan, David's best friend, his BFL. Here we go. One day, David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness? Holy Spirit, we thank you for this time in your word. I dare not teach us in my own authority, in my own ability, but in what you have given me. So I thank you that you are our teacher. And here we are listening early in the morning, your sons and your daughters. Teach us today. Let us learn how to apply the principles in this story, which was a real story, God, to our lives. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One day, David asked, Is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba? The king asked. Yes, sir, I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, Yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodabar, Ziba told him, at the home of Makir, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Makir's home. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, Greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show you kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you will show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba replied, Yes, my lord, the king, I am your servant, and I will do all that you have commanded. 
And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table like one of the king's own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. From then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. So, thank you for this word, Lord. Okay, so, first of all, do y'all notice a theme here? You see how more than once in this in this passage of scripture, in this chapter, it's saying that Mephibosheth was crippled in both feet. So, like, in the beginning, you know, David is there, and it just says, you know, he's like, you know what? He's like, one day, I'm just I'm just wondering, is there anybody left in Saul's family? Now, you got to realize, y'all, King Saul, remember he had a very shaky faulty uh rulership you know it was it just wasn't right okay so it crumbled uh blood was in his household and and so it's like is there anybody left a family that was once so well known and so profound and so enormous all of a sudden you know it's like is there anybody left from the household saw you know it, like is there anybody left and there's always somebody that has the answer somebody's like yeah my fever chef jonathan's son but he's crippling both feet. And I was telling the team this morning, who asked him that? Like, why he couldn't just say Mephibosheth? Why? I say, it's just like when people say, yeah, you know, Rahab, Rahab, the prostitute, or, you know, Kelly Lane, the one that was this, this, or this. It's like, people can't just say who you are without adding some kind of negative connotation to your name sometimes. It's like, he's like, yeah, Jonathan's son, but he's crippled in both feet. In other words, it's like David, King David, you know, yeah, that's one level, but surely that's not who you would want, somebody who's lame and crippled in both feet. And so, and, and not only that, but Mephibosheth lived down in Lodabar. Lodabar, which actually meant nothing, the land of nothing. It's like he had been forgotten. He was down in Makir's house. He was in obscurity. But, you know, being the fact that he was five years old when his granddaddy Saul was killed and his father Jonathan was killed, that he probably didn't remember much about being a part of the royal family line anyway. So somehow or another, he probably had got used to living in these conditions, living down in Lodabar with nothing. He referred to himself as a dead dog. And it's like he was so humble that he didn't even act as if he was ever the son of a prince or the grandson of a king. So pay attention to that. And so, so David was like, okay, we'll go get him. So can you imagine how Mephibosheth felt when he realized that King David sent for him down in Lodabar? Because, you know, he probably was a little nervous because he wasn't nervous. David tells him not to be afraid. But just imagine he knows he's from the household of Saul. Saul was David's sworn enemy. And it's like now David is sending for his son, and I just wondered, for his grandson, I just wanted that Mephibosheth really know about the relationship that David had with his father, because it's kind of interesting that Saul was like his biggest enemy, yet they was married to Saul's daughter, and best friends with Saul's son. And you ever just been in a relationship that's kind of just, the dynamics are just kind of weird, but it works, but it worked. It worked for David. And so, this is what's happening here, and so he sends for uh, Jonathan's son, but you gotta understand, back in 1 Samuel 20, when Jonathan and David made that covenant, Jonathan was like, as long as I live, be good to me. But if I die, remember my family. And it's like, it took a minute, y'all, for David to remember his family. Matter of fact, it took so long that Mephibosheth had grown up. He was five when his father died. But Mephibosheth had grown up and had a child of his own, Micah. I have a son named Micah. So it's like, he had a son named Micah. So, you know, he was of age by the time they remember. But it just shows you how sometimes it seems like something is taking forever. But that God does not forget. He doesn't forget. And at the right time, he will pull you out of obscurity. And the fact that they kept saying he's crippling both feet. It's like, he's lame. Um, he's forgotten about. He's in obscurity. Nobody even knows his royal lineage. He's forgotten about. And it's the very one that David calls forth and says not only am I going to bring you forth and restore you and give you everything that was due to you because he was entitled to the things of Saul the things that Ishbeth uh forfeited when he was rebellious Ishbeth remember King Ishbeth you know what happened to him remember two of his own men came and beheaded him and then brought the head to David it was just a mess it was terrible go back and read it if you missed it but it's like so Mephibosheth missed what was due to him but it still came to him because that's the kind of God that we serve. It's like even when people purposely try to take things from you or purposely overlook you or try to exclude you, God will still call your name. And he always does it when you least expect it. Because just think back to 1 Samuel 16 when the prophet Samuel came to Bethlehem to find the next king. Because remember God was like, Samuel, how long are you going to mourn over Saul? Get up, get up, go to Bethlehem and anoint the next king. I'll show you he's from the line of Jesse. He's one of Jesse's sons. And so it's like when Samuel goes and he asks Jesse for his sons and Jesse he lines seven of them up and leaves David out there with the sheep. And then when he goes through all of those and he still doesn't hear God saying, this is the king, then you remember Samuel's like, Jesse, do you have another son? Just like, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> but he's a runt, the runt David. You see how he's like, yeah, this is Mephibosheth, but he's crippled. It's like, 
who are we to say who qualifies or who does not qualify? But we, as as hum, as humans, have a tendency of like classifying people and deciding who's worthy of the blessing and who's not. So you see this happening over and over again in Scripture. And it's like, but the very one that Jesse overlooked, his son David, is the very one that same said. We're not sitting down to eat until you go get them. Everything stops. It's like the very one they try to exclude from the table is the one that everything had to stop. He became the principal guest. Here again, Mephibosheth, the one that was lame. Y'all remember why he was lame? When they found out that Saul and Jonathan had been killed, the nurse, the lady who was keeping him out of fear, feeling like the Philistines were going to come for him next, she ran to protect him. But in her running, in her haste, she fell. And evidently, he broke a foot or both feet, or obviously, and they did not reset. There was some reason why he was crippled in his feet, because he was not born that way. But it's like he was overlooked, and because he was handicapped, he was not fit to be king. And so he was just pushed away into obscurity. But when he least expected it, David sent for him. And the word today is like, and when you least expect it, God is going to open up a place for you. We too sit at the king's table. There is a place for you. Even though it may seem like things are not turned around. It may seem like you're being overlooked. It may seem like you're in a place of nothing. It may seem like you're not worthy to sit at the table. People exclude you. But in due season, God will call your name. And most importantly, David is a type of Christ. And just like he took somebody who was deformed, you know, somebody who was crippled, somebody who was forgotten, that's the same thing that Jesus Christ did with us. We were written off, forgotten about, left for nothing. But Jesus, his blood, it reconciled us back to God. And it's like, we too have a seat at the table. And it's like David said, no, even though I'm going to have food in his house and Ziba and all his sons and everything are going to serve him, I still want him to sit at my table as if he's one of my own sons, as if he's a part of this royal lineage. And that's what Jesus does for us. It's like... We are a part of the royal lineage. We have a seat at the master's table and we can eat there on the regular basis because we are sons and daughters of the king and we through Christ Jesus are kings ourselves and priests ourselves and so it just shows you that David his heart how tender it was you know how he kept his word to Jonathan even after Jonathan's death it took a minute but he kept his word and it's like we need help us to keep our word God and just remind us that even though it seems like we would be in obscurity or nobody knows our name or we've been forgotten about or perhaps there are some things that are due to you and yet it seems like it's a long time time in them in their coming and it's coming but you've got to know that in the right time God is going to remember you you have a seat at the king's table and I was telling them this morning that we should just type that in you know I've got a seat I have a seat at the master's table I have a seat with Christ Jesus I have a seat I have a place and even when man does not want to give you a place the Lord will give you a place he will make your name great he'll remember you and the very things that you think disqualify you are the very thing that people say that they think disqualifies you is irrelevant for God because he loves us so much so much so that he sent Jesus and because of Jesus and what he did on the cross we have a seat uh, at the king's table and that's what I just wanted to show today that David's Still, y'all, faithful, tender-hearted, so good that he kept his word to his friend Jonathan, the covenant that they made back in 1 Samuel 20, that he will remember his family. Not only did he remember his family, he blessed his, he blessed Mephibosheth. He blessed him and since he couldn't take care of himself. He even sent people to help. And that's what God does. It's like God always sends the help. And so, of course, as always, I want you to go back through and read this and just study it. But just look at what how David, his character and how good he was and just how faithful he was. And if he gave somebody his word, he kept it. Just tender hearted, just always showing shadows of Christ up until this point. And so that's the word for today. I have a seat at the king's table. I have a seat at my master's table. There is a place for me. I don't have to force my way. Mephibosheth was not coming finding David. He did knock on David's door and say, hey, remember your best friend, Jonathan? I'm his son. You see my feet? I'm crippled. No, he didn't. He was over there in Lodabar in the land of nothing, considering himself less than a dog. And then David came and sent for him. And it's like, when, when it's your time... God's going to send for you. The people are going to come after you. You're not going to have to go after them. They're going to come after you. You just be faithful and they're going to come after you. So Lord, we just thank you this morning. Thank you that we have a seat at your table. I know there are things that man can do for us, God. There are places that we can go here, you know, that are positions of high rank and authority. But, oh, God, most importantly, thank you for the seat that we have at your table. Thank you that because of the blood that Jesus shed, we have been reconciled to you, God. We just thank you for this morning. Thank you that we have a seat, that we are a part of the royal lineage, God. Thank you for that this morning, God. We honor you because you are so faithful. And we thank you for your word that you have given us in 2 Samuel. 
you, Lord, 9, that as David did for Mephibosheth, he did not forget him, Lord. We know that you have not forgotten about us. Even though the world may write us off or say that we are not qualified, God. That is the very, that is the very thing, God, that oftentimes you use to qualify us. So we thank you for that this morning, that you love us so much, God, that we too can feast at your table. Anytime we get ready because we're your sons and we're your daughters, we can just come to you day or night because of what Jesus did. And we just thank you for that this morning. Lord, we just thank you that we're coming to you this morning, shoulder to shoulder before your throne. Just thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. Oh God, just, just bask in the goodness of who you are. And just thank you for the miracles and the signs and wonders that are following us because we believe that you are who you say you are and you will do what you said you will do. So God, we just honor you this morning. We bless your name. We thank you for the word that is coming alive, that is making sense, that is becoming relevant, that we have been able to remember. Lord, that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for that this morning, oh God. And as I always ask, Lord, I ask you now to go before the prayer voice, every brother and sister, your sons and daughters under the sound of my voice. And I ask you to bless them, Lord. I ask you to keep them in perfect peace. God, I ask you to cause your face to shine up on them, oh God, and give them peace. I ask you to give them wisdom this morning, God. I ask you to give them favor to open doors for them that no man can shut. I thank you that there is a table prepared for them, even in the presence of those who detest them, those who despise them, those who disqualify them, those who discount them, those who overlook them. I thank you, God. You're still setting their table, God, in the presence of those who are trying to destroy them. And I thank you for that this morning, God. Please go before them now and make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight, and bring every high place low. I thank you for that this morning, what you're doing for the prayer warriors. God, thank you for the favor that rests upon our lives. God, just like Mephibosheth said, we don't deserve it, oh God, but we thank you. We acknowledge it is your grace. And Lord, we just thank you for your grace this morning. Just type it in. Lord, I thank you for your grace. I don't deserve it, but because you're so good, I thank you for that grace. Lord, we don't, we don't overlook what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we just take a moment and just say thank you for everything big and small. We thank you, Lord. God, thank you, Lord Jesus. We just honor you for your grace. It is your grace that is keeping us. It is your grace that is carrying us, God. Your grace that is protecting us, oh God. And we thank you for that grace this morning. God, I ask you to enlarge the territory of every son and daughter under the sound of my voice, oh God. Lord, broaden their horizons, cause them to dream bigger, pray bolder prayers. That is my prayer this morning, oh God, that just the spirit of a warrior will fall fresh upon them, God, that the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit will fall fresh upon them. They will have an experience even while this video is playing. Visit them in their homes, God. Let them know that they do have a seat at your table. Let them know they are not forgotten about, although it may seem that they are in obscurity, that it is only for a season. Remind your sons, your daughters this morning, that you do have a purpose and plan for them and that that plan shall be fulfilled. God, I ask you to place your righteous right hand upon them and just keep pushing them into the places, the, the blessed places that you have for them. That is my prayer this morning. Lord, I thank you for it. And God, for Avery, precious Avery, God, I thank you that her, her slumber is coming to an end. I thank you, God, and I believe you. And the warriors are with me by faith, God, that you're going to do a miracle on tomorrow. We just believe it. I don't care what the world says, Lord. We believe you. We take it at your word. God, and you said your word that miracles, signs, and wonders will follow the believers. And we believe for the impossible. I'm not afraid. I believe you're going to work a miracle, God. I believe it's going to be breaking news. I believe it's going to make national headlines, God, that your name may continuously be glorified. Not my name, but your name, God. For those that do not believe will begin to believe, God. For those who do believe, this will take their faith to another level. So, God, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for your sake, God, for the sake of your people, that those who do not know you will fall on their face and say, oh, you are real. Oh, you are still performing miracles in 2017. Lord, that they shall believe. That is my prayer this morning. So, I thank you, God, that you have blessed us to board that plane in the morning. I thank you, God, that we are going to see a miracle. I thank you for it, oh, God, for choosing us, the prayer wars, to join in with the Anderson family and with their community in Oklahoma, God. And I thank you, God, you work doing a work, God, that the world will know about. I thank you, God, for the book that shall come forth that Avery will write. I thank you, God, for the movie, God, a real true story, God, that we will see, the world will see what happens when a group of radical believers come together and we believe you for the impossible. So, God, this morning, I thank you for the great work that you are doing. It is your name on the line, God. I know that you will not disappoint. You are victorious. And so we thank you that this morning. God, for Monica, Lord, I know it seems impossible. We are with Miss Virginia this morning, Yellow Hearts. We are with her and we're standing with her. And again, miracles, signs, and wonders will follow the beliefs. And I know what it looks like, God. But with you, it's not about what it looks like, God. We're a group of radical believers and we're praying bold prayers. And I ask you somehow, some way by your power, God, that whoever had anything to do with her disappearance will vomit the truth. We want an arrest. We want a confession. And we want this child brought home to her mother alive. That is our prayer. And we're not going to waver. We're going to see how you will answer this petition. So God, I thank you for it this morning.
I honor you, God. And in the process, we just honor you for your word that you're teaching us every morning. That your word, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we get into your word every morning, it is increasing our faith levels. God, I thank you that this morning we can believe you for things today that we could have never believed you for a year ago or three weeks ago or a month ago. God, thank you for the great work that you are doing with the prayer warriors. And I just believe we ain't seen nothing yet. I honor you for it this morning, oh God. I thank you for the prayer link with Charlene today. That you will draw hearts from all over the world to join in and to hear about what you are doing. I thank you for the testimony that will come forth today about how a woman should have lost her life, but you spared her because she was a part of a praying ministry. She was a part of the prayer voice and you spared her, God. That we're not just praying patty cake prayers. We are praying prayers that shift the atmosphere, that cause things to move into favor and to bless us. An uh, atmosphere that is conducive for miracles. God, I thank you for this morning. The world will see, oh God, what happens when we get together and we dare to believe for the impossible. I honor you this morning, God. And before we close out, Lord, we just armor up we armor up, oh God, with the belt of truth around our waist, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, oh God, sandals of peace. We carry the shield of faith. We believe when the world says that we shouldn't. We believe there's no reason why we should. When it says impossible, hands down, case closed, all the chips are down, God, it is then that we still believe you for the impossible. So we thank you for that this morning, oh God, and Lord, your word, the sword of spirit. We thank you, oh God, for it, oh God, hide in our hearts that we will not sin against you. We give you glory and honor for this day. Thank you for David's tender heart, God, that we too can just pat it after him and reach back and be a blessing to those who are in need. God, and never forget the promises that we make. We honor you for this word this morning. Blessed be your name. Oh, God, we honor you. Every petition that has come in, every prayer request that is coming in, Lord, you've been answering these petitions. Testimony after testimony has come in. As you're typing in your request, your, request, your testimonies, whatever, God, thank you that you're seeing it that you're seeing it and that you're answering in a way that will bring you the most glory. Lord, we honor you, God. We will not be disappointed in you because we know that you are faithful and you are still the God who answers prayer even in 2017. We give you glory. We thank you. We honor you for this time of prayer. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Okay, you guys, meet me here in the morning, an hour early, 5 a.m. Central time. Did I get that right? Yep. Yeah. 6 a.m. Eastern time. Because I'm going, getting on a plane tomorrow. We're going to Avery. So join me because I really need your prayers tomorrow. I love you guys so much. I'll see you then. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.